G'day, my name is Brian from Vision Tech. We're going to look at this Lenovo ThinkBook 13S G2. It's a 13 inch notebook and it is aimed more for your home office or your small businesses. We're going to look into the features of this computer, the temperature and fan noise, as well as look into internals later on in the video. And as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to different sections that you may be interested to save you time. Now, let's start off with what this computer can be configured with. With the process wise, it is the 11th gen Intel Core, and you can even get the i5 or the i7. Now, with the processor, it is non vPro supported, so if you're an enterprise that does run vPro infrastructure, you may look into the ThinkPads instead. Now, with the RAM wise, it has maximum capacity of 16 gigs, and they are soldered to the system board, so you need to make sure that you select the correct configuration of RAM when you purchase this computer because you can't upgrade later on. Now with the storage wise has one slot of M.2 SSD and with the graphics it is Intel integrated graphics. It's got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. With the display wise there are three options. The first option is the wide ultra extended graphics array. That's a fancy word but it is basically a full HD but it has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, hence the special type of name it has. It is non-touch and it has 300 nits of brightness. With the other two options, it is the wide quad extended graphics array and both are rated to 300 nits of brightness and you get a non-touch version or the touch display version. Now with the touch display version, we do have a glossy screen both the non-touch is a matte sort of facing style. When I took the display to have a look at it in direct sunlight, with the text-wise, you shouldn't have too much issues, but if you're playing multimedia, then you may find that the colors may be a little bit washed out or struggling to see some of the multimedia in direct sunlight. But once you're in shaded area, that's not too much of an issue. The 300 nit display is perfectly fine. As for the backlight, I didn't find too much light leak on the edges. Measuring the color gamut coverage of the 300 nit non-touch display, it resulted with 99.5% sRGB coverage, 73.7% Adobe RGB coverage, and 76.5% DCI P3 coverage. It has a 720p webcam, and I do wish it had a 1080p webcam. We are in 2022 these days, and we do do a lot more video conferencing and also content creation. So it'd be nice if Lenovo upgraded to a 1080p webcam in the next version. And there is included a privacy shutter at the very top, and it's just a matter of a little flick of a switch, and you'll see a physical shutter that goes over the lens, and it goes red just to indicate there is something that's gone over lens and cover lens. So even if it turns on, you've got something covering the lens. That's fantastic because then you don't need the blue tape or the electrical tape anymore. This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the ThinkBook 13S G2. This is the video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality of the webcam is like. As always, I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got my one studio light turned on, and I've got the down lights in this room turned on as well. So I'm going to turn off my one studio light, and you'll see this webcam adjust. Now, I've got two down lights in front of me and two down lights behind me. The two down lights in front is a bit far away, so there's not much light hitting on my face right now. So this is what I would consider a dark environment. If you're in office environment, you should get much more light than what I am currently in. So I'm just going to turn on my one shoe light back on, and of course, better quality light gives you better quality picture. Now I'm also in a quite a noisy ambient environment. At the moment, I've got a few computers turned on, and it is about 51 to 50 decibels. So that's quite now there. So this is really a test of the noise reduction in the microphone in the. ThinkBook 13S G2. So I definitely love to hear what your comments are about the webcam and microphone. Put a comment below. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the left hand side of the computer, there is a Thunderbolt 4 port, which is USB Type-C, HDMI port, which is version 2.0B, headphone jack. Looking on the right hand side of the computer, there is two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, 
The one on the right supports always on and this Kensington security lock slot. There are two speakers located on the bottom front on either side of the laptop. When I tested the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure in at a peak of 81.5 decibels. So that's decently loud. And so when you're taking this laptop out to do a presentation outdoors or at a cafe, it should be A-OK -okay there. As for the sound quality of the speakers, surprisingly, it had a bit of bass. Now the mids and highs were quite strong and they were actually quite balanced as well. But I like to hear a little bit more clarity out of the mids. And I didn't find it distort too much when it was brought up to the maximum volume. Now, as for acoustic wise, it was pretty much 360 degrees, so I'm quite happy how the speakers sound overall. This is the audio quality of the speakers from the ThinkBook 13 SG2 at 100% volume. The weight of the ThinkBook 13 SG2 is 1.26 kilos plus the 65 watt power adapter becomes a combined weight of 1.61 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. ThinkBook 13 SG2 comes with a 56 watt hour battery and it does support rapid charge which means you can charge the battery from 0 to 80% in one hour's time. Now I did perform my battery life test on this particular 13S G2 and I tested my five different modes. So in best performance, it managed to get an hour and 40 minutes. And in better performance, it managed to get an hour and 45 minutes. And in better battery life mode, it managed to get four hours and 15 minutes. And in my battery saving mode, it managed to get six hours and 30 minutes. And in my media mode, it managed to pull eight hours out of the battery. Now, I do want to give you a disclaimer that most of my battery life tests is a very consistent workload across all the system resources. So you should actually get better battery life than what I get because most applications will hit the system resources in burst speeds and not as hard as I am consistently as I would in my battery life tests. So I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. As for the temperatures and fan noise of the 13S G2, my ambient temperature when I took the measurement was 21 degrees Celsius and my ambient room noise was 38 decibels. Now, before I read out the numbers, just to give you a bit of background is your average hand could be anywhere between 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. So that just gives you a bit of idea if an object is cool or warm. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 32 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it stayed at 38 decibels, so practically quiet. And the internal core temperature was averaging around about 37 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 20% load, so that's pretty much average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web, and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 36 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 39 decibels. So we we'll hear a little bit of the fan spin, but not much at all. And the average internal core temperature was 42 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 50% load and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 37 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 41 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 51 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 100% load and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 39 and a half degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 42 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 61 degrees Celsius. I also measured the bottom back cover when there was 100% load and the hottest area on the back was 40 degrees Celsius. And of course the fan noise stayed at 42 decibels. I really wouldn't advise putting this computer on your lap when this computer is running a lot of load. 
most computers I wouldn't advise to be putting on lap anyway, as that's not very fantastic for your lap. Overall, this computer did pretty decent for the temperatures and fan noise. Let's have a little stability performance of the processor in the ThinkBook 13S G2. This one's configured with an i5 1135G7 and looking on the Intel website we have a maximum total boost of 4.2 gigahertz and it has a base clock speed of 2.4 gigahertz at 28 watt TDP. It also can go all the way down to 900 megahertz at 12 watt TDP. It's feeling hot or it's trying to save power but ideally we want to see the processor around about 2.4 gigahertz and above. Now I've got this computer running on mains power and set to best performance and I have the computer also running on 100% load for the processor, RAM and hard drive for over two hours and I can see that the speed of the processor is ranging between 2.6 to about 3.1 gigahertz. So I would probably say on average it's about 2.7 gigahertz is what I see for the processor mostly which is doing pretty good in this form factor. So we don't have thermal throttling for the clock speed but we do have a little bit of turbo throttling from the processor but it's overall doing pretty well. We're going to have a look at the single core behavior of the processor in the ThinkBook 13S G7. Now, again, this is still connected to mains power set to best performance. And I'm going to start off a single core task in Citibench and we'll start the clock watch and we'll hopefully see how this runs. So we went all the way up to about four gigahertz and it is sitting at right about four gigahertz here for about 15 seconds now we're just passing now the one minute mark and we are pretty much at the four gigahertz pretty stable here i don't see it fluctuating that much at all we do hear the fan spinning off now uh, that was probably about the 45 second mark that started spinning off the fans but that's doing very well and stable at four gigahertz Putting our focus on the keyboard, it is a standard normal keyboard that I would see on a typical laptop. Unlike the ThinkPads where they have the control and function key swapped around, this one it's just the normal way around, which is great. Now as for the each individual key, it's got quite a bit of tactile feel. But as for the key travel, as you saw in my previous videos that I do do ThinkPads, this does not have as much key travel as a ThinkPad keyboard. I would say this is about two thirds key travel compared to a ThinkPad key, but still quite a nice touch to them. Now it is quite smooth on each individual key and we've got nice spacing in between. As for the sizing of the keys, I would call this small medium uh, compared to all the ThinkPad keyboards. The keyboard is a backlit and to actually control the backlight it is function spacebar. There are three settings low, high and off. As for the trackpad it is quite a nice size trackpad. Not overly large just a nice medium size and it is quite smooth quite silky smooth actually and it is mechanical so it is you can depress it at the bottom and it is hinged at the top. Of course it supports multi-gesture as well and I just find even if you had moist fingers you still be able to track and glide over the trackpad. As for the palm rest it is an alien video build on the palm rest so that should be very durable over many years to come. There is also an integrated fingerprint scanner with the power button which is located on the top right of the keyboard. As for the performance, I did perform the benchmarks for this ThinkBook 13S G2. Now this one's configured with an i5-11-35 G7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gig SSD. So I put up results for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin Lightroom, Pugin Premiere Pro, Pugin After Effects, Blender, Eugene Engine, and Spec View Pref.
and also some gaming benchmarks like Far Cry New Dawn and Immortal Phoenix Rising. Let's have a look at the internals of the ThinkBook 13 SG2. First off, we need to remove the back cover. It is held in by nine star shaped screws. So you do need to find a special screwdriver for that. After that, we just need to pry it open. And my advice as always is find the hinge and then work along the back and then along the side and repeat on the other side. Now I've undone this one to speed up time. And here is the internals of the 13S G2. Above the battery up here is the M.2 slot. Now there is a space saver for the M.2 for the smaller ones, but it is able to take on 2280 SSD. And then we've just got the big battery here and it is held in right here for the battery connector. So if you need to reset the battery or disconnect the battery, that's the connector there. Now I've just undone the screws for this one so you can see what's underneath. There is not much underneath as you can see. So the RAM is integrated and sold to the system board so you just can't really upgrade it. So make sure you have that configured correctly when you purchase this. And that's pretty much all there is Overall, after testing the ThinkBook 13S G2, I was very pleasantly happy with it as an overall package. The build construction of the 13S G2 is great. The keyboard is, couldn't put too much complaints with it. Besides just the key travel, I like to see more key travel like the ThinkPad keyboard. The trackpad, no complaints there. Has, does a very decent job and I can feel that it will last for uh, many years. And as for the display, it does a decent job as well. I love the aspect ratio of 16 by 10, but I like to see options for higher brightness ratings just if you're working more outdoors. And as for the webcam, I like to see a 1080p webcam option, but else it's not overall decent. And the speakers, does a decent job as well. So not too much complaint overall. So I could recommend the Lenovo ThinkBook 13S G2 to anyone. I hope you find this video informative and enjoyed. If you did, even support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll catch you in the next video.